So I know I had a lot of folks tweeting me wanting to know what I thought about Stacey Dash. Uh, I posted the clip and it blew all the way up. I wasn't <laughs> you, expecting. You made it go viral. <laughs> it went yes, you blue. did all the way up uh really really big it was kind of crazy i mean y'all know what i think i guess y'all just want to hear me you know do some dragging but y'all know what i think right <laughs> but uh dr jason johnson uh did a great story on the griot called black power rankings sunken place edition uh <laughs> top 10 black folks uh basically affected by you know trump's foolishness and all that good stuff really really great article and he embedded my, my story in there uh <laughs> I also want to hear Reese's perspective on this. I'll just say this. I said it in the tweet. Um, they always want to come home. Mm -hmm. They always got to come home. And my thing when it comes to these so-called apologies, what I want from them when they decide to come back home, if, you got, if you're going to do all that because the checks have run dry, it will be great if it happened before they were fired. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It would be right. great if they were specific. Right. So when Omarosa goes on her apology tour and she um, she was fired, of course, from the White House. What bothered me is that she never apologized to April Ryan mm. for allegedly, allegedly, according to April Ryan, working to get her fired. Mm. Never apologized to Simone Sanders, Angela Rye, Ed Gordon. I mean, she even insulted Robin Roberts. Who doesn't who is mad at Robin Roberts? Yeah. So these folks who are on the conservative side at this point, the Trump side, they specifically went after black folks in media. They mm -hmm. targeted them, right? Stacey Dash called Jesse Williams a plantation slave. Mm. A plantation slave. She said that, that BET should be canceled. There should be no BET awards. When you're as the checks you got for a long time, it was from BET, yeah. right? So I want to hear specifics. I don't want to hear, oh, I was an angry conservative woman how you specifically to, to increase your, your check, to increase your profile, you had to attack, you did attack black folks in media. And that's what I never get from them. It's just like, I'm sorry, I was in a space, I was blindsided, I didn't know any better. And now you wanna come back around because water has run dry. So yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's the grift. It's a, a story oh, yeah. as old as time. Reese, your thoughts? Well, I don't put Omarosa and I know I I heard y'all got into a big old thing, so I know she you're not, not like Team me. Omarosa. <laughs> Said I had a Jerry curl and everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, Omarosa is brass knuckles. Uh, she just don't play. But what I but what I did like about Omarosa is she brought the receipts on Trump. She was getting in Trump's ass. She was getting in everybody's ass. So I was here for that part of it. You know what I'm saying? Because she she came out. She she brought she brought her book. She did her grifting thing. But that's what everybody does when they leave the administration. But with Stacey, she just she just went on a whole nother level because her thing was more of a culture war. It wasn't just a political thing. Omarosa was getting a check. Stacey was just trying to get a check. I mean, she was getting a political check, but Stacey was trying to like basically work against the culture. And that's what I have an issue with. It's all a grift. And I mean, she just, first of all, she didn't even have the clout to, to go and come back because I remember her getting into it with Lisa Ray, all single ladies, and she was yes. recast. And shout out to Denise uh, Vasi because she was way better in single ladies than uh, than Stacey Dash. And you know, I just I don't think that she just has the kind of black political capital to 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 pull the switch of rule like other people might have. And let me just say one more thing: I met Stacey probably a decade or so ago in my party girl days in Hollywood, <laughs> and I'm not like a groupy kind of person to get pictures of people but i did take a picture of her and she was such a bitch i was like oh you got a stank ass attitude for no reason and i didn't look cute in the picture so it never got posted so i was just <laughs> like Ugh, okay well you got a bad attitude and i'm not cute in this picture so this is going in the trash so she has a bad attitude a bad ego so i'm all for the dragon and her getting canceled i couldn't add to it because i think that you know they were rude to go in on her, but I did collect all the memes, all the gifs, <laughs> and all the videos for future reference. Uh, so, Jason, like I said, you wrote this a phenomenal article, Top 10 <laughs> Black Folks Who've Lost the Most Since Donald Trump Left Office. Uh, break, us, break down for us your thoughts on Stacey Dash and then, of course, uh, this article. And number one is Herman Cain, which Lord knows. Oh, who, wow. Who, I mean, more he house man, but may he really? rest in power. He lost the most. Yeah. That he is did. I mean, ruthless. 
I mean, oh here's the thing. So there's a, there's, a, there's a little history to this, and I'll, I'll say this before I go into, into Stacey Dash in particular. So, you know, last year, um, during the, the 2020 primary, I say this in the piece, I used to write this thing called the Black Power Rankings, which a lot of people paid attention to. Yeah, uh, we even great. got a shout out from, from uh, now Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, Y'all always Joyce. did her she, dirty. Y'all always did my girl dirty on the black. She show. was number one. She was number one, and she appreciated. She said it on the show. She said mm -hmm. it on the show. So, <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with that, and um, that was see that was when I was with the root clay. I'm not, you know, mm. I still got love for those guys. I'm but, sorry, I'm not with them I, anymore. Um, Lord have mercy. And so we have been looking at a lot of these black folks. I mean, uh, uh, Pastor Daryl Scott mm. and 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 Kane and whatever, and you have a lot of black people who just latched on to Trump, and now they're all scrambling, right? Because they weren't real Republicans. They were grifters, yeah, yeah. right? Like, I don't have a problem. If you were a legit Republican, and sure. you just jumped on with the guy who was, a, I, I'm, I can be okay with it. I can just disagree with you. But a lot of these, the diamond and silks of the world, you didn't even believe in anything. Exactly. Candace Owens, you didn't believe in anything. So yeah. we decided to do this top 10 list of, of the black folks who've lost the most. Uh, some have been a bit more controversial than others. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, the number one, we put together committed, the number one on everybody's list was Herman Cain. Herman Cain oh, and Ellie Mistel man. wrote a really, really good sort of assessment. It was like, Herman Cain should have passed away as like a Republican icon, a pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of black man who made a lot of money and was really successful, but he jumped on the Trump train and quite literally it cost him his life. I mean, like mm. you went to a rally, literally. that infamous Kansas rally during COVID and then died. Yeah. I don't later. wish that on anybody. Yeah. But but if that's that's the kind of commitment that Trump seemed to require from people. Um, so so he's lost the most. But we also have Stacey Dash, we have um, we have Paris Denard, we have Dr. Ben Carson, we got a lot of folks. And 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 I'll say this about Stacey. Stacey Dash started her grift, she started at the end of the Obama administration, because that's what she was the, uh, saying her whole Mitt Romney. Mitt yeah. Romney, yeah. yeah. She, she jumped out with Romney, Romney yeah. and that's what she's like. I'm she, was a, she was a trailblazer. She she walked <laughs> yeah, so I mean, she ran so what uh, Candace could could walk. What do they say? <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Stacey she Dash she ran so away. Candace Candace Owens could walk. <laughs> um, you know, or Candace Owens could grift. Um, right. But the thing, I, the issue I always have with her, and the fact that she even got BET to like tweet her on some of this you because when she called out BET, they tweeted her back. I was like, oh, can we get our checks back? We get right, that money right. back. <laughs> like BET right. came at her. Yeah. My issue with her had always been she didn't have any intellectual foundation to. Her. Right. Mm -hmm. But she didn't really seem like a like a philosophical conservative. She just seemed like this is a way for me to get famous. You ran for Congress for like a month. And even you notice, Clay, and I and I like this when I put your link in the story. The thing is, Clay, even her apology is like, but I'm still a conservative woman. So what are you actually repudiating other than the fact that this ain't selling for you no more? Right. Yeah. Right. What but are what, what are, are the what are the specifics? Yeah. Yeah. And there's none of that. Yeah. You know that it's interesting. One person you have on your list is Candace Owens, who I think is deplorable and horrific. But I gotta push back a little bit. It appears with her, unless it'll 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 backfire in the next couple of years or so, that she's gained the most. It oh, appears yeah. she took a, a little bit from Omarosa, from, from you know, um, Stacey Dash, from Diamond and Silk, and just kind of created this hodgepodge. It's a lie. It's a fraud. But now she's getting a late night talk show. I mean, it appears she's really has gained the most and saw the mistakes of the other grifters and said, OK, how can I really, really iron this out? You don't think so, so Jason? So here's how she loses. And we had... Uh, you know, our rating, we called it our Scott rating, uh, based on Tim Scott. Oh, God. Uh, we determined. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> which, which, is, which is S, you have to have sold out your previous beliefs. Uh, C, the conservatives have to believe in you. You have to have right. said something outrageous, and you have to link yourself to Trump, right? This is the Scott rating. Yes. This right. is the thing about Candace Owens. If Donald Trump were still in office, she would have the full-throated backing of his entire media empire, his Twitter and everything else like that to make herself big. She wouldn't really need a talk show if Donald Trump were still in office because he'd still be retweeting whatever grift she was doing with whatever Blexa organization, et cetera, et cetera. Candace Owens having a talk show now in a digital outlet, not because think about it, she could never sustain her own YouTube show. 
She could never sustain herself as a Fox News analyst. I wouldn't say that this is a come up for her. I would say it is the next lateral move because the man that made you famous is no longer in office. If Donald Trump were in office, Candace Owens would be much better off. That's why we still consider her to be uh, somebody who lost with him being out of office. She at least got her hair upgraded because she got a cute little blunt bob cut or a little wig. So Harris Faulkner team must have been like, girl, let me sh- if you want to make it, and, you know, because Harris, I don't, you know, she she on Fox, but she keep her hair done, and you know, so so there has been some Harris shit. Faulkner. There has been a shift for Candace, at least in the hair. She didn't got the little blunt bob cut. Her her little edges is covered, so she had she had to make up together. I will give her that little bit of credit. <laughs> See, Reese could say that, but me and Jason ain't gonna no, say that. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, I had nothing to say. <laughs> nothing. Nothing to say on any of those kill. things. <laughs> I will give her that. Her hair. There's no kill. winning for any of us to say anything on that. Just stay away from it. But I said it. <laughs> uh, you you also have Van Jones in there. You know, Van Jones might be uh, tweeting your brother. Oh, you put <laughs> you Van know? Jones in there? So, yes, you did. Uh, so Van here's, like here's the thing. That was a really that was a really challenging, and I write it in the piece. That was challenging for me, you and did. I've said mm-hmm. this publicly. One, as a general rule, and I think we said this on the show. I I have a general rule. I don't criticize other black folks in media. It's kind of like when you're talking about black movies, like you just won't write yeah. it. I don't unless I think you're doing harm. I don't really have anything. To say. I don't say things about Jason Whitlock, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just like, look, unless I, I can disagree with you, that is generally a thing that I have, unless it's something you know really outlandish. Plus, I like Van personally, and Van has been good to me professionally. But it is a power rankings, and we are put together by committee. <laughs> I was overruled. <laughs> I, I, I was overruled because I was like, look, again, I don't have to agree with everything that Van Jones has done. But the guy helped get 14,000 people out of federal prison. I can, and that's why I made sure I put that in there. I was like, I cannot look those people in the face and say that Van Jones is, you know, blah, blah, blah. There are people who are much more critical of him and much more visions about him than me. Uh, mm. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm the messenger on that one. That's why I had to put in my caveat. <laughs> but, uh, but and, and again, I'm not saying that people's criticisms of Van Jones are unreasonable or unfair, right? I'm just saying it, with him, I think they have to be put into context. And I can understand people who are critical of him and I can understand people who support him. That's my, that's my fair take on that. <laughs> Your thoughts, Tracy? I mean, you know, we already went in on Van Jones before, so <laughs> yeah. it, is, it is that. I don't have the same level of animus towards him. I'm not like, oh, cancel Van Jones, Jan Van Jones sucks. But I mean, he 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 had a lot of hypocritical stuff that he done flip-flopped on since uh, Biden Harris are in office, but it is what it is with that, so it's fine. Uh, listen, speaking of uh, Stacey Dash, I have to play this clip. I mean, uh, no one can read more than a Janet Hubert. Mm. <laughs> and mm. this is a few years back, but I just got to, this is, <laughs> we're going to let Janet Hubert say it because nobody can read like the original Aunt Viv. This is Janet Hubert on HuffPost Live, probably like, my God, five or six years ago, but I had to play it for y'all. Listen to Miss Janet Hubert. Somebody needs to slap the little bit of black she got on her. Woof, woof. Off of her. Okay, the little bit of black she got on her, off of her, because girlfriend has worked on BET more than most actresses have. Mm -hmm. And I think she's just saying this kind of bold because she wants sensationalism and she's working for Fox. Mm -hmm. And she needs a job and she's making a check. And she's bringing controversy to herself. Stacey is a bit of a media hoe. Um, I don't feel anything for... Uh, Uh, Wow. That is... Listen, wow. she, that that's the legend. She she knows how to read. She <laughs> does know how to read. Wow. So I uh I just had to honor Miss Janet Hubert. So I had for a to minute. tug my little wig because I'm it shifted <laughs> a little bit after that. I was like, she, she ain't even snatching her. She said she's snatching my wig right now. Not that- <laughs> this this is the thing though. This is what I can say about and again, this this came to our mind. This came to our mind like with 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 the rankings. It's like when you had nothing beforehand and then you throw in, I look at that differently than mm-hmm. somebody who had something really going on beforehand, right? Like Ben Carson, Ben Carson was a black hero, right? Yes. Like, like I write the piece, gifted like, hands. gifted hands was like, everybody yeah. got it. If you are over the age of 30, 
if you are over the age of 33, you have a copy of Gifted Hands somewhere in the house. <laughs> some auntie gave it to you at some point as some graduate. Everybody got a copy yes. of Gifted Hands. Like I said, that's the black version of like white kids when they graduate, they get all the places you'll go by Dr. Seuss. Black right. people get <laughs> Gifted Hands. <laughs> that's what you get. So like, he's somebody who had something linked up with Trump and then ruined it all, like by that reputation. Stacey Dash, I mean, like, Clueless was the peak of your career, and that was literally 36 years ago. Unless you're talking 36? Gang of Roses. And I don't know was anyone that ever watched that movie. <laughs> oh, my God. 36 years ago. Jesus. 36 years serious? ago. That's not possible. Is it? 1995, it 2005, 2015. Yeah. 36 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Actually, I want to do a correction. Clueless was 26 years ago. Yes, 26. I had several people. I saw people texting and tweeting me that. You're making like, them feel old. It's I, I know. My, my, my in-brain math skills are trash. <laughs> and Jesse go, but you did the hand counting. That's why I was like, okay, well, he, he did the like, hand counting, so that had to be right, because he was like, okay. Uh, you know, but you were still wrong. <laughs> well, listen, uh, speaking, speaking of your uh, Black Power rankings, I do want to uh, play a clip of uh, Tim Scott. Uh, talking about oh, that uh, Biden owes Trump some credit. <laughs> Listen to the senator of South Carolina, who I'm sure Hiram Revels and Blanche Bruce are rolling in their grave, the first black, se black Republican senators in this, in this country. Listen to good old Tim Scott. He wasn't talking about Wuhan, wasn't talking about Beijing. He was talking about the Trump White House and Operation Warp Speed. What'd you think of that, Senator? Unbelievable to be, to be honest with you. Let's, let's, let's take a look back at 2020. It was NBC News that said they had to fact check President Trump, who said we would have a vaccine within a year. They said that would take a miracle. But what did President Trump produce? A miracle. Operation Warp Speed not only produced a vaccine, but because of President Trump's genius, we saw three companies that we saw potential in, so we bought 100 million doses at the beginning of this cycle. That means that when President Biden came into office, we were already averaging more than a million doses a day. By January 25th, it was 1.2 million. So in his first 100 days, he would have done 120 million doses, not the 100. The goal itself was underwhelming. Wow. I mean, this is the man who was who defended Trump saying, stand back and stand by to the Proud Boys. Uh, this is a man who had that horrible, really gutted the opportunity zones, you know, that he originally working with, with Cory Booker. And then when, when he jumps in, it has just increased gentrification in South Carolina, in Virginia. This is a man who was on stage with Ivanka Trump uh, advocating for Trump's horrific tax bill. And uh, this kind of grift is much different than so many other people because he has power. He has mm -hmm. power, Jason. He has actual mm -hmm. power that he's using on people and he spreads propaganda. This deeply, deeply dangerous. And the sad thing is, I think he's going to be reelected. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim, Tim Scott will get reelected. The, the disappointing thing about Tim Scott, <clears throat> and I say to somebody, I've attended his he has like an annual like big legislative thing uh, during Congressional Black Caucus week where he brings in HBCU presidents and stuff like that. You know, there are different, th there are things that Tim Scott does that don't make him, I mean, he, he's not a Ward Connerly, right? He's not an Alan West. He's not that ridiculous uh, from a policy standpoint. Like he actually does some policy things. But his rhetoric is what's often problematic. This is the same week where he was saying, you know, uh, uh, woke nationalism is as bad as white nationalism and <laughs> yes, supremacy. yeah, woke supremacy yeah. is as woke bad supremacy. as white supremacy. It's like, come on, dude, there's that's that's not even a thing. Stop oh, it, quit God. complaining. And and I think I think in particular about what he's saying about Trump is five hundred thousand people are dead. You can't take any credit on the positive end when five hundred thousand people died, and there's not. There's not an epidemiologist, a sociologist, or a public health person in America who will say that Donald Trump helped the process. He didn't help the process. So why should he get any credit? You know, I mean, like, if people were fighting against him, and, and this is the thing that really kind of galls me about that. When you look at places like South Carolina and Florida and Georgia, which are some of the worst hit by COVID, hospital, rural hospitals completely overpacked. 
uh, people dying in droves. The black community, again, still dying at a higher rate than any other group of people in this country when it comes to COVID. How you can wrap your lips around the words to say that Donald Trump deserves some credit is beyond me. And it's, it's embarrassing. It's, it's just fundamentally embarrassing. Yeah. And Reese, also what frustrates me is that Tim Scott if he really believes these things so passionately, why doesn't he ever, well, I know why, he never goes to black media. He's mm. terrified of black media. Right. He won't go on Roland Martin's show. Yeah. He won't go on Urban View. He damn sure won't go on Joy Ann Reed's show. He is terrified of black media. If you, are, if, you are this, if you are this black senator in South Carolina and you believe that you are fighting for black folks in your, in your, in your state, why don't you speak to the very community that you claim you are advocating for? Go ahead. Because, you know, we're not his target audience. His target audience is white nationalists and white supremacists. And he's the deputy of that. He's a questling when it comes to those things. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just really just bizarre to me. I, I just, I, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. Trump is out. You have enough political capital on your own to where you don't have to kiss his ass anymore. I mean, he's relatively popular as far as I understand in South Carolina. It's mm -hmm. not particularly competitive in 2022. So what is this about? And, and and you can't talk about well as we're marking five hundred twenty-five thousand that Trump never marked any marker, not ten thousand, right. not a hundred thousand. He said not hardly anybody's even died from it. So don't sit up there and try to act like well oh, the, and during this sober moment, which it wasn't about marking five hundred twenty-five thousand dead. It was actually about passing a one point nine trillion dollar COVID relief package, which he voted against. That's what it was really about. Um, right. It's just ridiculous. It, and it is, like Jason said, it's all about propaganda, propaganda. And to what end, I don't get it. I don't get the political calculus to keep trying to wrap your hands around Trump, who's actually going to be working against the party. He's sending out a uh, solicitation saying, don't, don't invoke, uh, don't, uh, don't support these rhinos. Give your money to my PAC. So that he can go and you know pay his own you know Trump golf clubs and this that and the other and then probably not even run in 2024. So I just don't get it other than the fact that he just is like really in the stunken place. That's the only way I could think about it.